Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nolly. In this video I'm going to be talking uh, a little bit more about the scientific method and how we uh, do measurements and the type of um, conversions that we do between uh, different systems of units that we use in measurements. So let's talk a little bit about the scientific method. What um, exactly is a scientific method? Well, this is a method that um, scientists use, whether you're in physics, chemistry, or biology, in order to advance our knowledge uh, in the sciences. So one of the things that you might be wondering is, how do we know that materials are made out of atoms, and how do we know that atoms are made out of electrons? Well, there have been hundreds of years of different scientists going through the steps in the scientific method to show that those uh, statements are true. Okay, so let's talk about how that works, how the scientific method works. First thing you do is you start with an observation. So you might be interested about cancer in general and you ask the question, well, you know, we collect some data, we notice that a lot of uh, cancer cells happen to grow when there's a lot of nutrients available. Okay, so the question is why? What sort of nutrients might uh, affect that growth? Okay, so you make those observations. So you have a hypothesis as a result of making that observation. You say, well, I think sugar, certain types of sugar perhaps, help the growth of cancer cell. That's your, observ that's your hypothesis, that's your guess as to what might be causing the growth of these cancer cells. Okay, So a hypothesis is just a, basically an educated guess. You've done this, um, you know, you've worked in this particular field for a long time, so you kind of know, you have an intuition as to what might be causing uh, a certain things to happen. Okay, So it's a possible explanation of your observation. Once you propose that hypothesis, what you have to do is you have to test it. You have to test to make sure that the hypothesis is not, um, you know, cannot be disproven. So in other words, you try to come up with all kinds of experiments that would disprove your hypothesis. If you've done all of these experiments and none of the experiment disproves your hypothesis or shows that your hypothesis is wrong, that doesn't mean that your hypothesis is right, but it's just that all the experiment have supported your hypothesis. Okay, now that's just one iteration of this cycle, and as you can see, you can then keep um, going through the cycle because after you do some experiments, you might collect new data, and the data might give you a new observation. Okay, maybe you notice that sugars tend to increase the size of cancer cells. So you think, well, are certain types of sugar will uh, increase uh, size of cancer cell? Then you make new hypotheses and you test them again. And you go through the cycle again and again and again until at some point you've done enough experiment um, you know, to come up with a model or a theory that explains why cancer cells grow and what kind of nutrients are needed for cancer growth. Okay, cancer cell growth. And so that's what we call a theory. So a theory is, is basically a series of these hypotheses that's, that are backed up by experiments. And it provides a, a, a more complete model of what's going on with that specific system that you're studying. So it's a model of why and how that particular phenomenon happens. Now a law is a separate concept. A scientific law is basically a series of observations. Okay that occurs again and again and again and it's been observed by different types of people at different times such that you have a relationship between uh, these different properties or this pattern okay the sci a scientific law and a scientific theory both of them are usually at the end expressed as some sort of an equation okay so for example we have the ideal gas law which is shown here PV over NT equals constant so what that's saying is that if I were to take the product of pressure and volume of a gas divided by the number of moles uh, times its temperature, then I'm going to always get a constant number. Okay, So that's a relationship that's been observed many, many times over. So that's what we call a law, and it's expressed in the form of an equation. Now the theory that explains why this law is true, in other words, the theory that explains why this observation, because remember a law is just an observation, a series of observations that's been seen again and again, 
right? The theory that explains this relationship is the kinetic molecular theory, okay? And we'll talk more about gases and the kinetic molecular theory later on the semester, but I just want to give you an example of how laws and theory are related. It's sort of the same relationship like observation and hypothesis. I just want to give you an example here of how this, um, you know, whole scientific method uh, steps are put in practice. For example, one, one uh, good example of this is that we know that dinosaurs exist because we have fossils of these, uh, you know, really huge uh, animals that you can construct together and form this, obviously, a really large uh, uh, animals. And we have to kind of explain why they're no longer here on Earth with us, right? And, for example, like uh, this particular exhibit you can see at the Natural History Museum uh, in downtown uh, Los Angeles. Now, a few years back, there was a, a, a scientist, a couple, in fact, a father and son team that proposed the idea that the dinosaur was wiped out because uh, there was a collision uh, between a meteor and Earth and the impact of that collision, um, the resulting force and, and you know, dust and, and uh, debris that's caused by the collision basically wiped out the dinosaur because it kind of choked off all the uh, available, uh, new, you know, food and uh, sources and whatnot for them. Now, this is basically a slide that I'm not going to go through in details to show how they, um, the team here, the father and son team, went through a series of uh, scientific method steps, observation, hypothesis, and experiment, okay, step by step here, to kind of keep going through the cycle that I mentioned earlier until at that, po at some point, they're able to going through these steps, you know, again and again, able to come up with a theory that um, proposes that this, this uh, asteroid, I should say, struck Earth um, and as a result uh, causing, you know, a, a whole kind, you know, all kinds of dust and debris and as well as the force itself causing dinosaurs to um, be um, uh, wiped out from uh, Earth, okay? So the importance of the scientific method is, is a very systematic series of steps, okay? You have to go through one step at a time. And these are actually all quite difficult in practice. So many times people would do this over periods of years before they come up with uh, a theory. And so one thing I want to emphasize to you at the beginning, you know, right now is that the word theory in the sciences really mean a very strong uh, concept that's been tested over and over again over several, um, you know, in fact, a lot of times periods of years and by a lot of people, okay? So um, when we go back, you know, one of the things that I forgot to mention here is that if we go back to the first time you propose a hypothesis and you do an experiment and then you later on come up with a theory, one of the things you do is you put out this theory to the scientific community, okay? And you so you do what we call a publication, so you publish your theory or findings. And one of the first things that people would do, other scientists would do, is they would test your theory. They would try to replicate your theory in their own research um, laboratories. And they will also test to see if you've done uh, other experiments that would see uh, would test if your theory is wrong or correct. Okay, so once you you know we come up with something like the kinetic molecular theory that I mentioned earlier for gases, it's really a very strong um, concept that has been tested over by several different people over periods of many many years. In fact, for that particular theory, it's about 150 years of of testing, hypothesis, refinement, and so on. Okay, so that's what you should understand about the word theory in science is really a very strong uh, concept, something that's been tested over many, many times over. And this is very different with the meaning of the word theory in the everyday language where it's really meant more as something that we have a thought of. So a theory in, in you know everyday language is usually more like perhaps a hypothesis or in, in fact sometimes it's just a guess, right? But in science the word theory has a very strong meaning. Uh, it means something that's been tested over again and again and again and has been um, proven to be supported by uh, experiments.